Hi all, Mass Barn Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Next to me is one of my first Tesla coils, which is the Vacuum Tube Tesla Coil 1. It uses two 811A vacuum tubes to drive the LC resonant circuit and can produce around something like 25 centimeters of sparks. So let's take a closer look at the components that it is built out of. At the front I have two RCA vacuum tubes which are usually used as transmitter tubes in old ham radios or radio transmitters. On top we have their plate stoppers, which is just a resistor with an inductor wound around, in order to stop oscillations between the plate capacitance and the LC circuit. The primary coil sits on a 180mm diameter form. It is a 25 square millimeter copper wire stiff from house installation that is used. There is 26 windings and it's tapped at winding 22. Its capacitor tank or the resonant capacitor in the LC circuit is a old Freiburg mega capacitor. It is uh, with a 4 nanofarad capacity and rated for 20 kilovolt pulsed operation. The secondary coil and top load the secondary coil sits on a 75mm diameter plastic tube. It is a winding that is 440mm long and it has 1600 windings of 0.25mm copper wire. The top load is 25mm in the small diameter and 152 in the large one. And the resonant Frequency of this LC circuit is around 300 kHz. The high voltage power supply uses a microwave oven transformer, which can put out 2300 volt AC. Put together for a voltage doubler with the micro oven capacitor, I'm getting 3200 volt when the input voltage to this through a variac is at 160 volt AC. Above the primary coil, I have a grid leak feedback circuit. Now, the way a class C Armstrong oscillator works is that by this feedback coil, the energy is coupled back into the driving the grid of the tubes. The blue capacitor sitting in here is the grid leak capacitor. And in a further shot we'll see in a moment, I can choose the grid leak common and then couple it with a wire to two and a half kilo ohm down to a half kilo ohm and this is to control the on time at how long the grid is conducting depending on how small a resistance is in the grid leak circuit in here the stacked ceramic resistors can be seen that is tapped at the back for the grid leak resistor the filament supply for the tubes is run underneath the base plate and it's from this toroidal transformer that it's fed 6.3 volt AC. The transformer next to it is for the phase detection for the Staccato controller. The Staccato controller consists of two 555 timers and a track to control the cathode connection of the tubes and by that cutting the ground connection and stop electron flow. By that we can, from the main transformer, track the frequency, so we can choose to run from 1 to 50 Hz on the main cycles, and we can also control the pulse width. The staccato control can be demonstrated by just turning the knob here. We can see the red LED is how many sparks we are getting at a per second, and we can turn that all the way up to 50 Hz, which corresponds to continuous wave operation. Right now there is no high voltage present, it is only the filament that is powered up on the tubes and as we can see it glows a nice bright color. Now the good thing about tubes is that when we apply power to it and we conduct too much current, the grey plate we have here will start getting orange and then red and at last and fatal for the tube it can melt. So. Tubes provide a very good visual indicator of overcurrent conditions, so you just watch your tubes. You don't even need a meter in order to know when it's yeah, conducting too much current. Filming the tube from behind, we should be able to see the red plating. 
as I go above the 260-volt the AC input. And it's starting to show now. You can see them light up orange on the plate. And we can push it even further. So it's very clear now that we are red plating these tubes and we should turn down in order to not destroy the plating on those plates. The moment you have all been waiting for is of course the sparks. From ceiling to the breakout point we have 33 centimeters or 330 millimeters. So let's power it up. We can play with the Staccato controller to uh, get fewer sparks per second and we can go back up into continuous wave mode. What I really like about the vacuum tube tester coil is the very soothing and smooth sound. When it goes into the 100 hertz sound of the rectified halfway rectified mains. Thank you for watching the demonstration of my vacuum tube tester coil that I built 15 years ago. I hope this inspired you to visit my website and see how I built it and perhaps you want to build your own Tesla coil. There is various types to build. There is some based on MOSFETs, IGPTs, vacuum tubes. So there is a lot of different topologies to choose from. It is not just limited to using high voltage transformers like this. There is also more simpler Tesla coils using low voltage, which is less dangerous to work with. And if you need help building your Tesla coil, you can visit highvoltageforum.net and get a load of good help from the very good experts in Tesla coils and high voltage that is the users of highvoltageforum.net. So until next time, see ya.